On a very compressed schedule here, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone, welcome back. I'm off to get my hair cut, and this is going to bring us back to our roots, because I think it's going to be a shorter show by necessity. Artist Journal, April 21st, 2023. Broadcasting to the world from a sunny spring in Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. Welcome back, and we have this beautiful John Carroll here who has really, I've just really liked this last series. I was a little slow to the draw with John Carroll. He's one of the first artists you see when you go to Object and when you start buying art and just checking out work on Tezos. And yeah, and he's kind of like, I was always kind of blown away. I mean, part of the reason I was slow is because I couldn't buy any of it because it was so expensive, right? So, I mean, he's got like a huge following from what I can tell. And yeah, so he's been putting out these really nice works. Almost I'm tempted to call them like it, animating the uh, furniture here, kind of in the same province, we might say, as Spiegel's Meskinen. Kind of uh, animating objects, giving life to objects, you know, animating animus, you know, uh, back to our Greek philosophy here. It's, it, it's giving life, as we were saying. It's like, it's it moves on its own so it must be living right and it kind of it kind of and i don't it doesn't anthropomorphize but it kind of gives life to objects and a little bit of personality by the way that they move there is a touch of retro here but it's not strong i mean the imac here theoretically could be brand new i'd almost say the filing cabinet looks kind of retro but may, they probably still sell those i just haven't seen one uh, i don't necessarily shop for this and i love the metal chair actually because i think we all most of us will recognize this kind of chair same with the filing cabinet and same with the computer and same with the table so the choices are i would argue i suspect purposefully almost recognizable uh, which to me makes them actually more significant. It's kind of a more of a, this is a home office uh, in a really kind of uh, generic in the best sense way and with beautiful colors. And then these flowers that are easy to miss, at least for me. And I love actually this plug-in here as well. And these flowers here providing a beautiful color and again, just kind of breathing life into the scene. A spring, a spring portrait of a home office here from John Carroll, a very cool artist. It's already at 420 Tezos. And another another lesson here in uh, getting the auction going. So, I mean, John Carroll doesn't need to put this at 25 Tezos, but by putting it at 25 Tezos makes it a uh, quick, uh, you know, someone will bid on it right away because they'd love to get a John Carroll for 25 Tezos. And before you know it, it's at 420. So again, this artist, the strategy by artists to make a low price to get the auction going and forcing the collector's hands if they want that work. Uh, so I think it's just a great strategy. Uh, as I say that to myself as much as anyone here, and we've been looking at John Carroll's work recently and I noticed, I thought these all feel like they're part of the same series and they are living rooms so we saw this awesome one here and what i notice in both of these this 000 and 002 the colors of the screens really add a lot to the work like this green here in a weird way kind of makes the work for me uh the color and i actually see that here too this great purple so and even the blues of the bottles so very nice color here very bright colors, which tend to do really well. And I mean, very prolific compared to, because I remember this came out at the Hen Reunion, this awesome one, which I just missed, the Windows Still Life number 105. So John hasn't put out a ton, uh, but in the la last few days is putting out a lot and it's looking beautiful. So how cool is that? A uh, couple of comments here that I want to highlight. Uh, another comment from Runetune on Hesdrubal. On Hesdrubal, Waffle. Additionally, something I really love about his work is that he is a master of reference. And we see tons of counterculture reference in uh, Hesdrubal's work. All the subculture references work together and create a Hesdrubal verse that makes sense that only he could create. Sometimes when people use cultural reference, it doesn't always feel very cohesive or authentic. That's interesting. Yes, I mean, it does feel quite authentic with Hesdrubal Waffle. 
I have used Evo actually in a previous piece. I will try and dig that up. Actually, that's an early phone work, which I actually, that was interesting. I sold that as a physical. I printed it out and there's a guy that worked at Factory here, which is a workspace. And he used, said he used to work beside, and I had a show there and the work was right beside him at his workspace. And he said he used to work beside it every day and, he, and then he really wanted to buy it. So that was great, really cool programmer dude. Uh, and he has it on his wall at home now, which is totally awesome. So continuing on, thank you for the uh, comments, everybody, RuneTune, Human Boy, Halicon, on and on, that great orbital track. And big shout out to, speaking of techno, uh, big shout out to DJ Kuro, uh, who we were messaging and he used to DJ at Trezor, like in 2001 here in Berlin. So how cool is that? So... You never know who's watching, and it just shows the world is small. So anyways, big shout out to everybody, DJ Kiro, everybody. Rune Tune, Human Boy. Uh, and here's Kiro uh, watching the show. And analog mod. So you see some of the synths here. Look at that. That looks like a 303 over here. Uh, and then a big analog modular synth system. And there is Artist Journal. Uh, there is the show with Kiro's piece there on the TV. So that is an awesome setup over in L.A., I believe. So very cool. Always watching your shows out here in L.A. Big shout out, Kiro, if you're watching. That's awesome. I want to highlight this. I mean, it's not every day you see a Henri Rousseau go uh, hit the auction block. And I had never actually seen this one. I don't think. It's called The Flamingos, Les Flamands by Henri Rousseau, the great Le Douanier. He was a customs officer, and I don't think he was particularly recognized in his lifetime. Like, uh, you know, Picasso uh, recognized him in the Surrealist later, but I think he, he never really, I mean, I think he was a customs officer, as far as I understand the story, and we'll go deeper, actually, and Douanier means customs, as far as I remember. We'll go to the Wikipedia maybe next show and do a bit more of a deeper dive. Anyways, Henri Rousseau, that incredible artist, sometimes seen as a kind of naive artist, quote unquote, naive, artiste naive, or a uh, folk artist is how I would put it. Uh, yeah, so one of Henri Rousseau's glorious canvases are hitting the auction block. They expect 30 million. I wouldn't be surprised if this went further. Christie's is going to do it. Uh, and which shows flamingos at a lily filled lake is guaranteed to sell and will be offered between 20 and 30 million. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it doubled that. Far ahead of the artist's previous auction record of 3 million pounds. So you see, the last time Henri Rousseau came to the auction block was 1993, and that went for $4.4 .4 million US. It is, says Max Carter, Christie's vice chair of 20th and 21st century art, a prime example of Rousseau's sought-after jungle paintings, which are entirely imagined as the artist never left France. And there's a very important detail, because that is part of the reasons why the Surrealists loved Rousseau, because he never saw a jungle, as far as I understood, and understand. And entirely imagined. And you see even, and I hope, I'll write a note here to go into that, next episode because Ernst also did kind of jungle painting tributes to Rousseau and here we see the artists responding to artists over decades right so anyways very very cool I'll be, be excited to watch that that's May 11th so in a couple of weeks here uh, speaking of auctions congrats to Sumi Reusi and let's actually make these a bit bigger here who sold on super rare for half an ETH horse gaze and I just want to highlight this comment because I think it speaks to a lot of the uh, experience of artists. Uh, I feel both happy and proud that Horse Gaze is the first piece of the collection of Dear Yagi's Kosabiyik at Super Rare. I lost my faith and motivation recently, and your belief in my art gave me the strength to continue again. Thank you from the heart. So this can often happen to you as an artist. So it, I think it's a reminder that just because you're not selling work doesn't mean people aren't looking and people aren't appreciating. Because uh, if you don't make a sale for a long time, it can feel that way. So anyways, big congrats to Zoom. 
and who makes wonderful, wonderful art uh, on object and super rare, probably other places too. Here's Matthias La Plata working, and it kind of goes with our Henri Rousseau, uh, you know, drawing straight from the imagination. Drawing, and I follow Matthias, uh, by the way, that's is a Twitter glitch. Uh, drawing without references is easier, apparently. So anyways, so here's the Hamburglar, beautifully done here. And you see actually all the just beauty of Matthias pencil work here. So anyways, uh, just beautiful work from Matthias. Looking forward to seeing that. And drawing from the imagination without references is easier. Thursday of look at what I did. So these look like stickers. It's not absolutely clear. So Flora Marquez is going to be on our next Twitter spaces on Wednesday. So do check that out. I will check if these are stickers or not. A uh, huge fan. And anyways, just great to see this work that we see all the time turn physical. And don't these look like uh, don't these look like the sketches that we're seeing on almost a daily basis here? Like especially this one here. And it's almost like the graph paper, the layer underneath has been removed. So here's almost another strategy that a digital artist can employ, which is saying, okay, for the digital work, I'll put the graph paper behind. But for a physical, maybe I want to get rid of that. And you can so, and it almost makes a new work, interestingly, especially when you cut out the, when you change the crop. So interesting, looking good, Flora. And here's just another, you know, art in the world sort of piece. This is Killer Acid uh, collaborating. And I think Purple Drank uh, works with this uh, juice company or drink company, Humble Sea Brewing Company. So maybe this is Beard, uh, Beer. Psychedelic Bug Juice and Humble Sea Brewing Company. So anyways, that looks really cool too. And there you see Dank Purple Smooth Tippa. So it looks really good. And even just the presentation here is awesome. You get the full picture. So really cool. And more just kind of physical world stuff. Uh, Dr. Version put out this awesome, uh, actually, let me just show you here. Art Matter Co is the, the account. And Dr. Version put out this awesome, let's see if there's any volume here, uh, of a pen plotter in action. And look at how big this can work. And this looks like it's maybe using like charcoal or graphite, perhaps. Maybe it's a marker, but it looks more like graphite or something. So again, pen plotters, uh, they seem to be a kind of like, they feel like a holy grail of sorts going from digital to physical. Because this could, in theory, be some kind of okay digital file, let's say, and then you put it with some texture and it turns into a gorgeous work of art physically, right? So, I mean, you could even, as we say, climb the ladder, make your digital work, but with the intention of doing it this way and then forget about the digital and then you're just left with the physical. Anyways, I just love seeing these pen plotters at work. Uh, and here is just kind of a studio shot from Somfe. It's that time again, first week of May, I'll be building two, two times Spectralume and two times Hither Dither. So here, look at this Japanese uh, hardware here, video enhancer and more. And these look ancient, don't they? So just really cool to see the glitch artists put me down for a Spectral max capacity. Pretty cool to see the glitch artists at work in the studio there. Uh, Moving along here, uh, Ed Marola, Demon Sounds, and let's see if we can get some. And there's kind of a demon figure, more hardware. Uh, and there is a devil going up. Interesting piece uh, as ever. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see where Ed is in like 12 months as far as style. And of course, Ed works with audio too. I think professionally, if I'm not mistaken. Cool dithering down here. It's turning into like some pretty high-end art over here, if you ask me. So we were speaking about textures too here, which is something that Ed does extremely well. And you gotta love just how kind of rough this is. Again, it's painterly. Uh, texture and painterliness seem to kind of collide and Ed's the only person I know that really plays with this kind of moving background like this. If you know another artist, of course, doesn't mean he's the only person that does it. But uh, anyways, it looks great in this kind of hilarious devil figure. 
and really nice color in this piece as well. And this, like, look at, again, look at the texture up here with this kind of light source above. It's really stunning. So it's really, really going somewhere with Ed. Edition of 100, buy now for four, and 87 left. Yuri J with a new one as well, minted yesterday, and edition of 10 for 13 Tezos. And maybe we, did we look at this? No, because this is minted yesterday. So no, this is a kind of what looks like, almost like a pinball machine of sorts, but maybe something different. Uh, and just kind of a living room setting looking out a window. I don't think we looked at this. Maybe we did. I was getting everything. No, this is new. So this is Juice Time by Yuri J. It looks great. I think, I wonder if this background was used before for, it felt like another piece. But anyways, cool work. Great. Again, look at, almost we're back to this texture thing. And look at it in here and the plants and everything and this cool uh, drawing taped on the wall way high. And again, playing with space as well and perspective and everything. And this big kind of key over here. Really interesting work. Again, these two artists here, you could really hang together, couldn't you? Uh, Mental Noise with a work celebrating uh, 420 here. Fire it up, 420. And here is, I think often uses a rabbit and just kind of a cool, uh, nice uh, color and just a cool composition of someone at home here. So celebrating with all sorts of references and paraphernalia. Buy for 10 Tezos, and that is on secondary, sold out at 420, of course, uh, to many familiar accounts here in half an hour. So congrats to Mental Noise, looking great. And here is Mikey Wilson, Backyard Portrait, also seemingly celebrating 420 here, edition of two, at auction for only five right now, a digital painting, and there, seems to be Mikey de la Creme and with his Vanguard balaclava and a Tezos pendant. So anyways, pretty cool from Moses Herzog. And Dan Control with a new animal, this time an insect, praying. I'm so regal, so mantis, and so vain that I start praying to myself. So anyways, kind of a cool, another cool artwork with a very detailed gradient in the background and underneath. So, and this is interesting as well. This almost creates a shadow where this, uh, maybe it's a praying mantis. It looks like a grasshopper to me, but maybe a praying mantis with all this other stuff. This is more than a grasshopper. So anyways, buy for two Tezos, edition of a hundred, looking very interesting as usual. A few works by Skitchism who is on Super Rare, and I'm not sure if we've looked at Skitchism's work on Super Rare. This is pretty new. This is from last week, April 14th. Prove them wrong. And this is part of a series called Animal Instinct. And we're going to look at the other one here too. Now, Skitchism is an artist that many of you are going to be familiar with from uh, Object. It's one of the first artists I kind of discovered and that I started buying with some really cool psychedelic illustration, I guess I'd call it. Uh, and you see it here with like the eye and the smoke coming out of the eye. So this is uh, from Animal Instinct, prove them wrong, and no reserve here. And here is another one. This is the first one, the Philosopher, reserve of 0.66. This came out April 11th, so a few days before. So a new series here by Skitchism. And yeah, so looking pretty nice. Interesting texture here. So again, playing with animals and here, Let's just give it the full treatment here, the full screen treatment. Interesting peace sign. Almost looks like Mayan art a little bit with the kind of chunkiness here, which is kind of interesting. Maybe, you know, oh, it, from Indonesia, vintage pop psychedelic art, but almost a bit of a Mayan feel, isn't it, uh, to the art. And here's some others uh, that we missed. These are from, you know, uh, March and maybe even earlier. So you're better than this, reserve of 0.36. So interesting, almost change of colors because on object, and we'll, we'll look at some point at Skitchism's work on object again, but usually it's kind of darker colors, even darker than this. So here's another one. So just kind of a quick tour of Skitchism's work. And this sold for 0.36 ETH, uh, $686 on March 10th. And here's another one falling down. 
uh, also by Skitchism. So experimenting when moving over to Super Rare, interestingly, and this also sold for 0.36 on in March. And here is some more Flora Marquez with another work. So it's almost like those, what seem like stickers, uh, was this top layer cut out. And here you have a character here with some pretty awesome, almost Sky Goodman sneakers walking across the clouds here. So this is an edition of one, 4,200 4, by Mentalist 420 uh, on secondary. I will float above in thoughts that make me feel bad. So I will float above the thoughts that make me feel bad. So cool work. And here's another one. Uh, why everything is so expensive. So speaking maybe to what many people are experiencing, everybody's experiencing these days around the world. Inflation, maybe. Why is everything so expensive? So a really nice piece. And you got to love the walking hand. Brilliant. Edition of one. And this sold for 20 to New Flark 2. So they keep moving out the door. Uh, as one would expect, Daniel W, untitled white and yellow over black number three. So I'd say a rarer uh, animated work by Dan Daniel W, kind of playing with the style a little bit and playing with the color and everything. I'd call it slightly more painterly uh, and it looks pretty cool. An interesting strategy for painting, which is, you know, turn it into a GIF. And it probably does make it a lot more interesting of an image by just giving it a slight animation. Uh, kind of reminiscent in a very distant way to Basquiat with just going all across and sketching, even has Drupal Waffle here with uh, just kind of doodling, as has Drupal put it. Untitled White and Yellow over Black number three, 1920 by 1920 MP4, 12 frames per second, one of one. Let's just see what this sold for. Sold for 50, uh, and right after it was listed for 320 at 325, sold within two minutes. And this is interesting here too. You know, back to you never know who's watching. When it was listed the first time, maybe nobody saw it. You don't. I don't get all my notifications on Object, so this is not a bad strategy either as an artist, which is just to relist. Relist the next day, sells in two minutes. You know, so there you go. Now we looked at this before, but we're gonna look at a few more works by uh, Claire DK, uh, Clar, I think we'd call it, asemic calligraphy. And I think a lot of this is physical. We looked at this piece, which is a stunning piece when you look at it here. Uh, you know, and it's kind of a simple formula to a certain degree of why it might work, which is a textured background. You see how this black background kind of has kind of rubbed out in certain areas. It's not perfectly kind of flat black. And then you just put some nice, beautiful kind of, you know, this asemic writing brush strokes on top and it just looks stunning actually. So we've already looked at this. Uh, buy now for 0 0.5, 0 0.4, reserve of 0.2. I think we've looked at this one. But just to ground you in the other ones we're going to look at. So here's another one. So playing with style a little bit. It's not like they're all in the same style here. Let me just quickly check the clock. We are doing well. Like the brushwork is fantastic. So again, calligraphy seems to be uh, how this is made. But you see how good this, you know, this looks again like museum, uh, something that could be in a contemporary or just a museum, period. Like it's beautiful. So really nice work from Claire, Asemic Writing, Calligraphy, original artwork by Claire DK. So this sold, this is from December, but I wanted us to look at actually some of these. We don't know for how much, uh, but just to give us a little taste here, this is the foundation page. So obviously on Super Rare now too. Uh, so here's just examples of Asemic Writing. And for those that are new, uh, Asemic Writing, as far as I understand it, is writing that looks like writing but doesn't mean anything it's actually it's kind of using using the visual components of writing like here but it's actually it's not saying anything it's just writing that looks like writing using the what i want to call the visuality of writing the visual quality of writing and playing with that so that is really interesting i mean it's kind of one of the the other big themes we talk about uh we talk about uh, we talk about the uh, we see an AI, we talk about mediums, you know, traveling through the mediums and everything. 
And another kind of big theme I think that's happening weirdly, and I think we have to observe and just kind of keep tabs on, is this kind of convergence between uh, writing and visual uh and vision and and art, shall we say, for lack of better, of visual, there, there seems to be a collision in the sense that now you can make visual works of art with a prompt, right? And even in reverse, we can get a prompt from a work of art using, say, in Midjourney, the describe uh, function. So this is kind of another angle at it, which is literally taking writing and turning it into a visual thing. This is a big theme too. This is kind of a what we might call a major theme too. Uh, something I've been really interested in for a long time. The Peloponnesian War series plays with this idea of how we read. How do we read? Because here, and it's kind of going on here too, because you, you're kind of wanting to read this, right? And it's like, how do we read information is kind of the bigger picture. And, you know, it probably goes to different parts of the brain, but it kind of, at one point, it's probably unified and then goes to other parts, I'm guessing. You know, the language component and then the visual understanding component. Anyways, we have a few works here. Uh, so it's interesting to see, th they all do unify in style, but they are kind of slightly different approaches to style, which is interesting. Because uh, you get the sense, like, and look at this. I mean, this is just a beautiful work. A calligraphy painting. We'll see if it's sold. I mean, this is some very nice uh, work, and I believe it's physical. So this looks like it's on black paper, perhaps, or maybe it's just a black layer. We're not sure. I'm not sure uh, if this is on canvas or what. But again, this is very good-looking work. Uh, this was made in March, so just a month ago. So this was all missed. So catching up here, here's some more. This is from February 26, 2023. So more just asymic writing. And again, you got to love this kind of physical paper in the background here, even here. And this could even be the photo, the light hitting the paper. Sometimes it'll create it darker, but it all kind of works beautifully here. So I think we have some more. Here's another one, kind of inverted uh, brother. And I think the other one was called was it father? Yes. Excerpts from personal speeches given to me transcribed VHS recordings. So that's interesting too. So using VHS recordings transcribed. Now you wonder, is this writing? Or is this someone looking at a speech and then making marks based on the emotion of hearing the speech? So again, we're kind of back to language and, you know, written language versus visual language. Uh, so a lot kind of unifies with this asemic writing. And I think what that A in, I think in Greek uh, is no. So not and semic probably means something like meaning or something, kind of no meaning, asemic writing, okay? Uh, here is another one, declared. This is from January, 2023. And so another cool work here using a thicker brush. So anyways, very cool work from Clark. Merchant Coppola with a work, The Bends, and also kind of playing with words and vision here. I feel this. So pretty cool, kind of twists up these words here that kind of stretch together. Word art. And so again, this kind of shares a similar theme, shall we say, as the pigeons come to my balcony here. Francoise Gamma. Uh, edition of 15, and this is pretty cool for three Tezos. So continuing the experimentation here, and a triangle that gets turned into a different shapes here. Chi Mosku Jackson had a early series, I was on his website, of platonic solids. It kind of reminds me of that. Uh, GE, uh, so anyways, cool work from Francoise Gamma, all available. Another take on the walking... Uh, figure, and here this is an edition of 15, also all available. Francoise Gamma has been releasing a ton of work here. So this is looking pretty good here too. So anyways, uh, interesting take from Francoise Gamma and a beautiful work here by Lorna Mills. Look at this, let me see if I can make this bigger, I can't. Can I do this? I can do this. So this is posted on Twitter 
and playing with a black mask. Again, she uses the marquee tool, from what I understand, from her ex explanation on Twitter the other day to someone who asked. And here you see what looks like a cave, maybe a grotto of sorts, with light shining in. And so, anyways, and you almost see water, or just sunlight coming in and some rocks. Turned into a, a, just a beautiful work there. And here are some works by Max Drecker uh, that we also missed, April 4th. So just some interesting uh, abstracts and not animated, still in kind of a different take. Again, bringing a different style to a different blockchain here. So anyway, so here is one, Dualistic, and part of the grid collection. And here is the grid collection. And buy now for 0.1. So reasonable uh, buy now price. And here's another. So you can get some, for the collectors out there, you can get some cool abstracts for very reasonable price from someone who's done a lot of abstract artwork, geometric abstract artwork. So here's another beautiful one on foundation from Max Drecker. So two available in this collection there. And the guy I like to call the master of psychedelic abstraction, Acid Boy, and Laboratory 5 is available on Object, I believe. So here it is, another just cool take. So again, taking one theme and just hammering away at it, sort of like Francois Gamma does with the walking figure, Acid Boy does with this kind of animated abstraction. And so this is available for 150 Tezos. Edition of 10, is that on, that's on secondary, sold out on primary for 10 Tezos. So... Very cool there. Uh, and is this new? Yeah, that was just released yesterday. Uh, and here's another interesting animated abstract work. This is by Renki Hakata, uh, is the name of the piece. Edition of 10, none sold yet. And just kind of, so you see, like you can again make these shows out of what these artists are doing. Like you can start to group uh, things into themes here. So uh, yeah, all these, hypothetical shows exist in my mind here. This is Hakata by Renki, whose work I think we just recently started looking at. I found this on Twitter. I don't know if I've ever uh, seen V4W Anko, holographic machine. I don't know if this is generative. It might be, let's quickly open here. This might be generative art, but it's an edition of seven. So it probably is, but it's not FX hash is what I was wondering. So anyways, cool work, buy for 0.88 Tezos cents, edition of 15. So pretty reasonable there for a pretty cool artist, uh, one left. And so, yeah, so anyways, cool animated abstract work. And here's their work in their collection here of their work, their creations. So anyways, playing with color here recently, media artists, sound and visual are being realized in real time by manipulating of self-programmed algorithms. Sounds almost like screen recording of some kind. It's going on, look at Tegenhoff with this awesome work, edition of five for a Tezos 50. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. I couldn't believe they're still available. I think I have like a Tezos 20 in my wallet, otherwise I would pick it up. This looks great. So very, very nice piece. You even gotta love like the, seeming JPEG artifacts here and everything. Beautiful color, all about it. I love it, Tegenhoff. This is wonderful. And there are three left, so get it while you can. Uh, here's an edition of seven for one. So again, it's pretty awesome work by Tegenhoff. I, I guess that's why I didn't see it because I recognize the name Tegenhoff, gift creator and collector. Some couple of very nice works. They pair well together there too. Uh, don't be so vast yet. We saw something very similar to this yesterday, but I think this one's different. A uh, gif of a flower. Let me make sure. Here it is. I'm going to cut the volume here. Uh, but really nice, uh, kind of trippy uh, flower here. Kind of makes me dizzy looking at that thing. So anyways, cool work from Don't Be So Vasya. I think a variation on yesterday's, which is why I brought it up again. Uh, well, it's a variation. Future Funky Springs, my special piece to join the event, Spring Fever, pixel art. So I guess there's a spring event. Maybe that's why John Carroll put the uh, flowers at the start there, perhaps. So some pixel art by P1, interesting as ever. Spring Fever, so maybe spring colors here. So that is cool. I guess this is going on. 
uh, for anybody that's interested. Part of the Pixel Scrapbook, uh, edition of 35 for a Tezos 10. Green Ginger with another interesting piece, deconstructed, deconstruced abstraction. And this is pretty cool, how it all kind of separates here. So, you know, sophisticated pixel art from Green Ginger. Uh, I think this is on secondary now. Yeah, so pixel art, I mean, it just sells like crazy. Mech.txt, big success story in pixel art here. Uh, and so with a kind of a new piece posted on Twitter, I believe, kind of nice and rough in here. I really like this, you know, grass or whatever it is. Uh, that's so interesting developments here. This almost looks like fog, maybe a lighthouse of sorts, but not positive. Anyways, very interesting works. Cloud's almost reminiscent of Tom Bombadil, interestingly, here, just here. And then you get more dithering here. Anyways, very nice piece and some interesting stuff going on in the corner here from mech.txt. And here's a, a collaboration, arrival of piece number 14 from Perceiver here. We are proud to announce our first collabor collaboration piece, Methuselah, by Michael Macasso, a great artist. He has done a great work of art for us, and we're welcoming him into our art house as a second member after OAX Lysen. Give them a follow. So anyways, it looks like classic uh, mech.txt type uh, scale and dithering and maybe with some animation inside. So maybe that's where the collaboration is coming from. Mech doesn't do a ton of collaboration from what I remember. And here is Mech. Retro Manny is putting together a, a cyber pixel anniversary collection. I think I'm gonna be hosting a Spaces next week if everything goes according to plan. Uh, with some pixel artists, so that'll be fun. With Retro Manny, I assume we'll be there too. 8-bit inspired soundtracks. So looks like they're working on a piece and also some sound. I'm trying to see what synth that is. That looks like uh, maybe that's a Novation synth. So probably just a MIDI controller here. So anyways, more studio shots looking interesting here. Cool piece by mech.txt. Next, nearly ready for the drop next week. So very cool. Uh, Rini Finish. Reverse sad. So maybe this was the piece that was posted yesterday. One day they will accept your imperfections. Thank you. You are breathtaking. So anyways, big shout out to Rini Fish. Uh, and here is just another really cool original work uh, from her. And uh, yeah, who was celebrating 420 yesterday. And let's just see how it did here. So it's just minted. So not listed yet. Continuing on. Let's see if this loads up. I was having issues with this piece loading up here. Klaus, try it again and we'll come back to this in a second and we'll see if it loads. Sometimes foundation, they don't cache, so sometimes it can be hard to show their work. Here's Kurt Hustle Collective, Apos Artifact. We found this in, lodged in your brain near your frontal lobe. So kind of keeping with the alien uh, visit sort of theme, Again, I think Art Bell would be all over this series here. Pretty cool. I mean, beautiful, beautiful textures and, you know, glitch and all, you know, all this stuff that we remember from the 90s here. Uh, let me see if that last piece showed up. It shows up. Okay. Uh, close. Analog method. So interesting uh, piece here, too, with seemingly some video and some glitch and everything. Mysterious abstract work, eh? I guess we'd call it animated abstract. Interesting experimentation with kind of the framing here, too, and everything. Uh, buy now price set for 0.1. So very reasonable. Buy now for 0.1. And so anyways, very cool. Made with various analog video gear combined with no input feedback. Post-processed in DaVinci Resolve. And again, there's KHC and another one, Glitch David, Shag, the Shag with feathers so smooth. Okay, so by now, edition of four, very low edition. Kind of looks like a TV of some kind, TV channel or something. Not sure what's going on. So anyways, kind of cool glitch work there. A Guide to British Birds, Glitched is the series. And of course, big fan of Acid Soup series here, Glitch Sushi. And so maybe deviating, expanding beyond the junk food a little bit with uh, this one here from Acid Soup. Really great, just rich textures again. 
and EdgeQ, big shout out to EdgeQ. Uh, three is the magic number by De La Soul, another 90s uh, reference here. And here it is, I mean, brings a lot of us back. So just kind of a cool work with a song. And let's see, maybe a remix of sorts. It feels like a remix, really slow version. It may come back. I couldn't get it to load later in the track here. But anyways, check out EdgeQ's work uh, and often uh, remixing tracks here. Really good artist, cool, cool dude from, I think, Puerto Rico who joined us on a Twitter Spaces a week and a half ago. A great way to get to know people. I highly recommend the Twitter Spaces. If you feel like you're not getting enough, uh, if you just are, you know, maybe you're new, Join the Twitter spaces, come on stage, and you know whoever's there will be introduced to you. And it's just a great way of kind of introducing yourself. Here's some others celebrating 420, Panama Sativa from EdgeQ, also with a song. So <laughs> this is, so yeah, so this is addition of five for five Tezos. Very cool. I love this trading card, uh, you know, motif, trope. And here's another one, Indica Land Race. Very good, uh, nine, 2023 tie stick TC Indica. So anyways, very cool, addition of five and also. With some cool, with some almost like feels like thick tracks here from EdgeQ. So very cool. Look at Martin Joe also c celebrating 420 here. Trippy Bears, come and join the trip of the Trippy Bears. This looks like a GLB or something, right? Uh, and there you go, that's hilarious. <laughs> Underneath the couch there. And there's a coffee maker too, and various objects here. Anyways, big shout out to Martin Joe, uh, who's been pretty much watching this program from the start, which is totally awesome. Trippy Bears from the Kinky Bears for the Metaverse. And Clown Vamp with a piece that I missed the other day, The Simple Ways. And kind of a painterly approach here. We see some texture here. I mean, what's so interesting about this kind of texture, this kind of emulating paint texture, we see it with White Solitude too, is how convincing it's becoming. Like brush strokes that were made digitally or maybe even with AI before, like early AI weren't as convincing as we're starting to see now. Like they've kind of, it feels like the, whatever algorithms they're using to create the AI, brush strokes are really working. So the simple ways, and a small story here from Clown Vamp, edition of 91 for 25 Tezos and all sold out. Let's just see what happened here. All transferred, I'll probably transferred there to uh, maybe to collectors and who knows, collectors and friends and everything. Anyways, cool work, painterly work by Clown Vamp and just some work by Strange Thing. AI menswear wool spring collection. So look at this. Uh, almost feels like a spaceship here on this one. And this gorgeous Nike watch, which just looks totally persuasive here. And their chat GPT is activated and just more work uh, from Strange Thing using textures, really different kinds of textures. Here it's wool and playing with wool uh, textures, basically. And anyway, just really cool work from Strange Thing as ever. That almost looks like a self-portrait at the end there. And continuing on a new work by Mr. Shapeless. This looks like it's using like, you know, maybe newer versions of AI, like maybe this is Mid Journey 5. It looks slightly more fo uh, photo real, just slightly, slightly less painterly. Uh, so anyways, a new take on our figure looking off into the distance here, GN from Mr. Shapeless, keeping it interesting. And Ali Izakoski with a physical work here, just kind of a cool, uh, you know, physical painting here on dark paper, seemingly. I think it is, or it's dark paint around the side, but it kind of looks like, a, or maybe there's a dark underpainting. Either way, it looks great. Also someone who's been watching this show almost from the start. Going back to our roots this show, everyone. Thank you for watching. I'm off to get a haircut. Hope you have a great weekend. Until next time, take care. Thank you.